lousy first quarter and three great consecutive quarters after that. So play hard, good things happen. You guys have done this twice to the Bulls now. What, what do you feel like the messages or gets into this team to allow you to make these big comebacks? Well, this team's, our team has continued to play in all these situations all year long. Um, we were dangerously close in the first, first quarter to getting booed by the greatest fans in the NBA. And, um, and we responded, you know, in the second quarter, third and the fourth. Um, the group that started the second half did a phenomenal job. And, you know, we allowed 19, 28, and 27 after giving up 39 in the first quarter. So the majority of it is presence and hard play. And, you know, we figured a few things out offensively. But it's, it's about the defensive end. But he held out a really fantastic second half. Ended up breaking the franchise record for threes today for this team in a season. What did you see from him in that half to let him kind of get free and get open a few times? I saw the bank was open. And it was, a rough, it was a rough night up to that point. And then we just we caught a little magic there. And uh, that got our crowd going. Um, and we, we started picking up some momentum. And it's, but it's all about stops. It's all about stops. And, you know, you know Chicago's down, down a couple guys, really good players. And, you know, we just felt like we needed to keep trying to wear them down. Call a timeout with about five minutes to go down by two. What was the message then to, to tell these guys to get it over the hump at the end? Well, just that we needed to play clean basketball as much as possible. You know, fouling has been a nemesis of ours. Um, we did a pretty good job down the stretch. You know, Levine's going to jump over you and hit some shots, but we just got to continue to make it hard on him. Uh, we made a couple of really poor mistakes. Before that, we had a gamble out of the corner, and we gave we gave White a wide open three. That was a, you know, that was an untimely um, miscue, and but we got it together. Miles Turner hit an enormous three, you know, down the stretch of the game, um, and I, I just you know I want to mention uh, Jalen Smith. You know, here's a guy that's um, you know, really been out of the rotation um, in large part, you know, for the last couple of weeks. He has continued to work, keep himself ready. I thought his minutes were probably the difference in the game, you know, even though it was, you know, it's six, six minutes, but he goes in there plus four in the fourth quarter, um, dunked the ball, got some rebounds, you know, tipped it to another guy. He just, you know, he was ready. And this, that's, that's the kind of um, player that we're looking to build with, you know, a guy that's just a straight professional is always ready to go. You started doing it on defense and talked about just presence. I mean, I guess to just go a little bit further, I mean, what did you think changed on that end? What got better on that end? You know, what did you see some guys do, I guess, maybe that you hadn't seen in the first quarter? Well, uh, you know, the pattern in a lot of NBA games is you, you get hit in the face and then, you know, you, you fight back. And um, fighting back is, is a tough way to consistently win in this league. Um, some of it was, was fight back. Some of it was, you know, seeing the ball go in. That always energizes your defense. I mean, I, I can't sit up here, here and lie and tell you that, that the offense doesn't affect the defense. It does. Um, but our guys in the, in, the, in, the, in the second, third, and fourth quarter got the crowd into it. And that makes it hard on the other team. Makes it hard on the other team. So, you know, I, I was proud of them. It's been a very tough three and a half weeks. Um, this break comes at a much needed time. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll reconvene next Tuesday and go from there. You obviously talked a lot about the contributions Buddy's brought all year, but for him to break Reggie's record still with obviously a lot of time to go to add to it, I mean, just what's it say for just the season he's had, the contribution that he's made, and just the craftsman, I guess, that he is as a shooter. I just want to watch the three-point contest. I want to see him and Ty in the finals. That's my, that's my short-term dream. Um, but, you know, Buddy, Buddy is going to go down as a historically great three-point shooter in this league. Um, and, you know, passing Reggie Miller for the single season mark with 22 games to go is, is a strong statement. And, uh, and I know if Reggie was here, he would, he would congratulate um, Buddy because Reggie's that kind of a stand-up guy. And he, 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 he really appreciates, you know, uh, specialization and greatness, you know, in, in, in the area of specialization when it comes to shooting. So um, congratulations to Buddy and uh, – you know, we got a long way to go here.
Uh, just one more. Aaron obviously was one of the guys, a few guys that was making shots early. You get 21, uh, 7, and 3 out of him tonight. Just, I guess, the, just across the board contributions. Both yeah, I, you know, his points were, were certainly key in this game, but his presence defensively is something that we can, all, we can almost always count on. And that's been his calling card on our team. That's how he's won the, the starting job at the four position. And, uh, you know, he's, he's continued to develop and get better. And so it's been, it's been great to see. This has been a great opportunity for him here in Indiana. Great, Kevin, have been around so many great shooters. Is there something about Buddy that's memorable that you'll think about long after your time together? I, you know, I, I just love watching the officials trying to get the ball out of his hands during timeouts when he goes and grabs it. And say, I mean, he is, he's obsessed with the art of shooting. And when you're, when you're obsessed with something and you work at it um, and, you have, and you have the ability to go along with it, um, you know, you can change the game. And uh, so, you know, there's, there's a reason. You know, he's leading the league in, in, in three-point makes. I mean, there's really two reasons. You know, the work he puts in and, and Tyrese Halliburton. <laughs> I mean, it, this, this doesn't happen without Tyrese, you know, putting the ball on a platter for him too. So, um, it's a it's it's a very significant accomplishment, and congratulate him. A couple of housekeeping. Isaiah just didn't feel well at halftime, presumably. Is that yeah, he that? he was um, he got a little dehydrated, I think, but uh, they took care of him. And uh, when we went after in afterwards, they said he was fine. So I don't I don't think there's any issue there at all. I expect him to be fine coming out of the break. Starting TJ tonight was that more of what? TJ had done against the Bulls previously or something to maybe jumpstart Andrew a little bit? No, it was it, – it, it turned out to be not a, not a great coaching idea, you know, the way, the way it went. You know, I'll just say, you know. Um, but, yes, you know, it was, it was how, t how TJ played in the last game. Um, and I don't think that was necessarily the reason we started off poorly, but um, – you know, we, we did a better job start, starting with the regular lineup and then having him come off the bench. So, you know. Uh, it was just you know, it was a blessing. Uh, it's a new NBA, man. Uh, you, you shoot threes and uh, shoot for you at a high level. Uh, one thing I said was this year, I wouldn't say I'm just getting up threes. I'm shooting at a high clip. So, uh, you know, but passing a legend like Reg Reggie, you know, in Indiana uh, shows a testament of my hard work. Uh, Education game and my teammates finding me in the right over spots. Uh, you know, people say like, yeah, like, quote unquote, you can't do it with my teammates. Yeah, my teammates find me a lot. You know, but, but me moving, um, passing, replacing, trying to find me to get open. Still without them mm, finding me, uh, I couldn't do it without them. But uh, you know, uh, it's a great accomplishment. But you know, we just gotta keep building and see how far I can go with it. You had six in the second half after banking in that one. How much did seeing that one go in end up meaning to you? Yeah, it was weird. It was, I think my first bank three all year, all year too, you know, and uh, felt, my shot felt weird past two, three games. And, uh, you know, sometimes all you need is one to, to give you a rhythm. And uh, when I think Ty gave me the one on top of the key, and I was able to, uh, I think Aaron gave me one, uh, just relocating and get me in rhythm. And, uh, you know, sometimes you, you just don't know in the basketball game when you can find the rhythm. I think my teammates did a good job unexpectedly knowing that they finally got me a rhythm, and I felt felt good out there after a while. You're always grabbing the ball and, you know, dunking and things like that. How important to you is your routine before a game, during a game, to, to stay dialed into what you're doing? You know, just, you know, just, uh, it's weird, and, and I, I know I annoy the, the refs a lot, don't it? But, you know, you're on the bench sitting down and his hands cold, and it's Indiana, and, like, I'm not used to cold temperatures, you know. You go to different arenas like Miami and L.A., the ball tends to stick to your hand easily. But when you're in a cold environment, you got to touch the ball and, f and see how it feels because, uh, you know, that's my, that's my feeling, like get, feeling comfortable with the basketball. So I'm just like, I saw little things I do to like try to like, feel like get, feel, get myself in rhythm or get a little touch, what else I call it. It's weird, but that's how I work with the basketball. Aaron, you guys started very slow, but then ended up coming back to get the win. What was key to you to turning things around, especially defensively, to get this one? Uh, you know, yeah, we started down early, but I wasn't really worried because, you know, <laughs> we're, we're a pretty good team at coming from behind. So I knew we were going to walk them down at some point. Um, it was just about making sure once we walked them down, we were able to get over the hump, unlike we were able to do it the last couple of games. So. 
Aaron, what, what changed defensively? You know, I think you guys gave up 39, obviously, in the first quarter, and, and three solid defensive quarters after that. Just what did you see change? How did you guys just manage to, to um, lock in on those guys? We started playing harder. Um, we started switching with um, the five men, so it made it harder for them to play in their pick and roll game, which was picking us apart in the first quarter. Um, and so once we did that and we uh, started boxing out and rebounding, everything fell into place. Just, uh, buddy, what do you think just this comeback says about this team? And you guys have had a, a, a lot of these, maybe not as big of a deficit this year, but in a lot of games that you guys have been behind, you fought back and at least made it close. Just what does it say about what this team is that you can get yourself back into these games? I mean, it shows shows growth. But we always say growth, you know, we just get to, like, sustain stuff like this, you know. And, uh, and yeah, we don't want to be coming back all the time, you know. It's annoying, but... I think that's where, like Erwin says, that we're just already at our best. But we got to figure ways how can we get leads and sustain it and uh, play winning basketball and not play timid and uh, play pace of basketball and uh, don't give up leads when we have the leads. And, yeah, when we're down behind, we're, like he said, we're so confident that we can get back to the game that we just need to just, when we get back there, just finish finish the job. And uh, But uh, hopefully, I you know, we've been struggling the last 20 games, if we can be exact. Uh, hopefully to go into this break with a fresh start and come in, everybody locked in and collectively on a seeing page and uh, get after it and make this last push we can make. Aaron, just how do you think you found an offensive rhythm over the last couple of games? Obviously hit some outside shots, but there was obviously more to it than that. What do you feel like you've discovered? Uh, you know, ball movement, teammates finding me. Um, you know, they make my job easier. I try to make their job easier. and. I'm just making sure I pick and choose my right right times to be aggressive, and you know, kind of like what Buddy said earlier, I, I need to start taking more threes and uh, being more volume on that side, and it'll make the game easier for everybody. I think. Buddy, at what age would you say you were like, all right, I'm a good three point shooter? You know, I was always short, and uh, I always had a good arc on the ball. About, I stopped. I used to run track when I was younger. Uh, Playing in the yard, and uh, when I when my mom moved back to me with my grandmother, she we couldn't leave the yard, so I had to build my 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 own court, my crate court in the yard. And uh, when I was able to get to the court, I was it was easy for me to shoot because I just shoot in a little box. So when I got to the rim, uh, everything was just easy and it was just hot arc, and I just came natural. You know, as a kid in the Bahamas, there's a lot of weird stuff we do, like we throw rocks all out and we try to aim at stuff and. Uh, Competition and stuff like that. We shoot marbles, like a lot of even stuff, and uh, just where it just came natural for me. And uh, if you look at all the kids that come from the Bahamas, I'm the less athletic one, least athletic one that ever touched the basketball. Everybody's jumping, dunking, putting the ball between their legs. I'm the only one that can put the ball in the basketball efficiently. So uh, I was blessed to shot, not with athleticism. <laughs> Kobe obviously wasn't known for his three point shots. So were there other players that you aspired or tried to take things? Purely from a shooting standpoint, uh, you know, as as I as I get to my college career, I start watching Steph and Clay a lot. And uh, there's one person I watch every time they play is Steph and Clay, and just the volume of shots they get up, and the volume of how they team set screens, and the, the movement they do, and the types of shot they do. And see, so, yeah, some some of the shots they take is ridiculous, but you know, just. Watching them, you know, just say, like, man, how the way those guys play and the way they shoot the ball, like, you know, hopefully I can get to that level one day. And so those guys inspired me, and uh, I know I couldn't be like a Kobe Bryant. So coming to college, I used to watch Clay and Steph at Oklahoma City all the time, the way they shoot the ball, and it was a thing of beauty just watching them. So I used to watch them twice a year every time when I was in Oklahoma, and it was fun going there every game. They came in town, and I was, especially in the playoff, it was fun to watch. I mean, it's always good, especially after the win. You know, it's always good seeing your shot going, going in. Um, you know, uh, feels great, man. You know, good, good energy. Uh, thanks to my teammates who has been there for me. You know, and when they see me, uh, you know, when they see that shot going in, they they try to find me. So thanks to them. I know you're in a hurry here, so we'll let you go. But one more question before the All-Star break here. Um, what do you want to see this team look like when you come out of the break? It'll be kind of a fast and furious finish with 22 games like that. I mean, definitely better defensively, you know. Uh, we just got to uh, play hard, you know, uh, and win games. That's what I want to see. I, I want to have the opportunity to get to the playoff and, and have the experience. So, you know, hopefully we come back and, uh, you know, we do better.
I think we kind of just kind of sleepwalked our way into the game. Um, I think, you know, it's not the first time this happened this year. Just kind of roll into the game and just try to let things happen as opposed to making things happen. But, you know, um, the flip to switch, you know, when it needed to. You know, we, we were never really out the game, but uh, we didn't really play ourselves into it as well as we could have. What uh, just what all changed defensively? I mean, Rick mentioned, you know, presence. I'm sure that's got a lot to do with it. But what did you guys do different, better to just take them out of their game the next three quarters? Well, it was a, it was a combination of things. I think we played harder. And um, scheme wise, we changed up our schemes almost every other, you know, possession on the floor, you know, whether we're in hedge, whether, you know, we're blitzing the pick and roll, whether we're switching, like we just, we, we got creative of ways, giving them different looks, you know, not letting them get comfortable. With the buddy obviously gets rolling there, uh, in the, just, just how much did that change everything for you guys offensively? I think you made 13 of your first 14 shots in the third. Yeah, it always does. I think uh, makes are contagious, you know, he finds the hot hand, and uh, but he's the best at what he does, so, you know, he's, um, uh, he steps up when it matters, you know. I think he just um, so he just has no conscience. He's able to kind of go out there and um, make the impact that he does. Just how cool is it for him to get the record? I mean, with with a lot of time left to go, he's got the franchise record. Yeah, yeah, man, it's dope. I mean, just seeing him and Tyrese come over here and having such a impact on our culture, organization, our city is, um, I think, it's something that's so dope, man. It's just not something you see all the time, especially so quick. So. You know, they both quickly became fan favorites, and it's been, it's been good stuff. What impressed you about just his work? I mean, like he's oh, man. obsessed. Unreal, bro. He's he's always in the gym. Like you literally, um, you know, thousands of shots up a day. I mean, he's always one of the first ones here. Um, I try to beat him here. It's kind of a competition, you know. Um, usually one of the last ones to stay as well. Takes care of his body. I mean, he's um he's a pro's pro, man. He's like I said, he's just good at what he does. What just does it, what does it say for these this team basically that. This team still has a comeback like this in it. This is tough as the last month has been, um, basically, as, as many losses that you guys have had to still find that inside your head. <laughs> well, you know, I, I think it was a goal to go into the break, you know, with some positive momentum. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the pass is the pass. You can't control that. But, you know, we got a we got an uphill fight, you know, coming here after the all-star break. But I think for now, everybody's just, there was much need to break for everybody. Everybody's going to take their time, enjoy themselves, and uh, get back here ready to work. Zach Levine, it's tough to give them a lead about five minutes to go and Carlisle calls timeout. What was the message in that in that moment and how did that propel you guys down the street? Of course. Zach, Zach's a good player. He's um someone I've gone against for years now. He makes big shots, but you know, at the same time, um you just gotta stay the course throughout the game. You know, go out there and he's gonna step into the moment. What changed for you offensively down the stretch? I mean you obviously able to hit some big ones, but it seemed like you got rolling with stuff around the bucket, you know, get a couple of things to fall. It seemed like there was kind of a weight um, off. Yeah, it was a it was, it was a, a weird night for me offensively. I think, you know, to their credit they did a good job of adjusting, you know, from last game and um, you know, just uh, step up and hit my shots. I mean I didn't shoot the best tonight, but I made it when it counted. So, you know, I'll hang my hat on that.